Hello and welcome back to Clownfish TV. It is me, Giggy Sparkles, and you're only going to get me today because Neon is elsewhere. But we're going to have fun and, and, and Neon not being here is probably a good thing because otherwise she's going to blame it on men. So the Mary Sue, you can always count on them to come running and trying to white knight for things like the Acolyte and then claim that it's, it's doing badly because of review bombing and because of men. I guarantee you. I didn't read the whole article, but I guarantee you she's going to blame men for this one because that's what Rachel Leishman does. Rachel Leishman, who was the one who said about telling men to keep their hot takes about Captain Marvel to themselves. But you had to listen to her hot takes because, you know, she has tits. And then we had her whole thing where she was going after Nerd Roddick because he obviously doesn't like Doctor Who and never watched it because he didn't agree with her, even though he's a huge collector of Doctor Who stuff and has been a fan for years. Did that same person. So like clockwork, here she comes. And then she uses that as her headline. Like clockwork, annoying fans review bomb the acolyte. Because, you know, it's always review bombing. You got to blame it on that. It's that and men. Those are the two go-tos, especially for the Mary Sue. I'm surprised. You know, I, I would probably die of shock if they tried to actually think and come up with some new other arguments besides the straw men ones they always run with. But, you know, thankfully they never do. Um, before we get into it any further, please like and subscribe. If you do, you're going to get a woohoo. And we're going to talk about this. Um, Rachel, grab your butt because um, I'm not a dude and I have some thoughts. So she's going to blame it on review bombing. Now, look, to be fair, I do believe that some people are legitimately review bombing this show. That being said, I also 100% believe that people are using reviews, um, whatever they call the opposite, where they inflate the reviews. And there's a bunch of five star reviews that were kind of in lockstep and saying the same things. And when you looked at the people who wrote them, they had never reviewed anything before and had no account on there. So, yes, they are going to do both. There's going to be review bombing 100%. There's also going to be review inflation, 100%. And the thing is, you cannot dismiss every negative review as review bombing. Yet, Rachel will try to do that. Even though when the critics, you know, when, when the audiences and critics don't agree normally, and but, they, but the audiences side with them, then the critics are just terrible people, right? But now it's all, the audiences are stupid. And they're going to use The Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. And we're going to get into that. But here's the article. Like clockwork, annoying fans review bomb the acolyte because we have to have a tired argument. Uh, Star Wars fans do not suck. Star Wars, but but only the ones who think that 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 they they know who the franchise represents. They're the ones that suck. That they're the fans in quotes taken to review bombing because you know if you don't agree with Rachel, you're not a real fan. You're a fan in quotes because she said so. I'm so tired of this. Look, Star Wars has always been representative. They've never tried not to be. Just movies in general have always been, have, have often been represented over the last, like, you know, 30, 40 years. The issue is, they used to be a good story with good characterization that happened to be representative. Now they're just um, OC stand-ins for the writers. And this one is no exception. Leslie Headland, let's pull off the bandage, is a lesbian. Her wife is the one with the with the whips with the whip lightsaber, and they're talking about you know all this representation of lesbian Jedi's having babies because of the Force, and they're rewriting the Force. And if it's true, the Force is female by Episode Three, and they're gendering the Force. This is what I'm talking about because it's not about knowing what you're writing about and making it fit and making it you know writing to fit into what it should be. It's writing to change it, and that's what Disney Star Wars has been doing. I get they own the franchise now and they can make new things. The problem isn't that they're making new things. The problem is that they fundamentally don't feel like Star Wars things. They're, it's like a coat of paint on it. Anyway, here we go. The critics are okay this time because they agree with, with, with uh, her, Rachel here. The accolade has received overwhelmingly positive, positive reviews from critics. Coming in around 90% in Rotten Tomatoes. That's a pretty amazing feat. Not really. It's pretty much expected. I would have been more surprised if it didn't. And they're like, well, the current rank of 91%, the second highest rated Disney Plus Star Wars series behind Andor. There's not that many reviews, though. There's 110 critical reviews. 110. That's not a whole lot, right? And if you click on this and you go to, you know, I don't know if let me see it on here. Maybe it's on here. Um, top critics is only 75%. That's it. 75% top critics. Okay. The all critics is 91%. And they started a couple years ago letting people on there to review and be critics of things just because they were the right type of people. But beyond that, they're going to bring up later The Rise of Skywalker and The Last Jedi. And we're going to look at that here in a minute, too. Um, 
So tell me why this series has an audience score of 27%. Actually, don't tell me. It's obvious. The show is being reviewed by, by the so-called fans who know what's best for the franchise. Because you know what, guys? You're not real fans. You're so-called fans. The real fan is her, because that's what she thinks. Well, well, you know what, Rachel? I've been a Star Wars fan probably longer than you, because I'm pretty sure I'm older than you. And they even named a character after me. So I think that gives me more cred than you. And I think you're the fan in quotes, because I said so. That's all it takes is me saying so, and that makes it true, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Of course, the toxicity on the dudes. Here we go. Told you, caught it. You could... Bet money on this. Review bombing doesn't really do anything. It just shows how much time these dudes have wasted in their life. But it's really sad to know that without fail, they will do it just to broadcast their toxicity. Here we go. Your toxic men wasting time. Says Rachel Leishman, who wrote a whole article about it, talking about that no one's going to read because no one reads the flip of Mary Sue. It's dire. But, you know, let's talk about wasting time there, Rachel. Um, then, yeah, here. Star Wars community is so toxic. Anything about a white male league gets review bombed. Not true. There are a lot of things that people like. In Star Wars, it didn't have white male leads. Actually, there were a lot of characters people liked that weren't men. And there were characters people liked that weren't white men. Finn got completely robbed in Disney Star Wars. But, you know, do go on. Um, they go down here in the one part of this one here. I wonder what these two critically loved Star Wars projects have in common that makes the incel... Oh, yeah, of course. Here we go. Incel. Hey, Eric, dude. Um... I'm married and have kids. I'm also not a dude, so fuck off. You gonna sit here and tell me about how to, you know about being you know a woman and all that shit because you you like to do that. You you kind of people like to do that. You know there are people that aren't even white who hate this show. And what are you gonna tell them? I mean, you're a white, dude, so you don't get to tell them anything. Oh no, you're you're Hispanic. Never mind. I'm sorry, but you still still anyway. Um, Acolyte lost an extra ten points over Last Jedi, probably thanks to more melanin. Yeah. Well, I'm a ginger. We're pretty much, we're, we're, I'm basically black. So, you know, according to Hollywood. So kiss my ass. But let's look at this. Yeah. The accolade and they're comparing it to Last Jedi. Here's the funny thing about all that. So back, let me take you in the way back machine. The critics love The Last Jedi. Same chill critics that you're seeing now. Love Last Jedi. You know, the Mary Sue loved Last Jedi. Best thing ever. Audiences didn't. After the first week or two, it fell off a cliff. OK, they are now basically blaming The Last Jedi for the division of the Star Wars fandom. They've been for a while because it literally split the fandom. It fell off a cliff after it. A lot of people hate The Last Jedi, but the critics love it because it's everything they want. You know, anybody can be a Jedi and it's everything they wanted to hear because they're all the same lockstep type of people. It's all what they wanted to hear. And then when The Rise of Skywalker came out. Those same critics got pissed because golly gee willikers, they found out that when The Rise of Skywalker came out, people like me who said there seems to be no overarching story or plan here. And they're trying to tell me how I was wrong and I was stupid and I was all these terrible things. Then they're like, oh, my gosh, guys, I don't think they had a plan. And then the people who loved The Last Jedi gave The Rise of Skywalker bad reviews because they walked back all the stuff they loved. And so every time one of these super far leftist, whatever, you know, stupid things where they ruin Star Wars show up, they all come out of the woodwork to be about, yay, yay. So do am I surprised that the people who gave The Last Jedi glowing reviews gave the Acolyte glowing reviews? Hell no. And then the same people that were pissed about, you know, they were mad they left The Last Jedi and then come, yeah, look, 91%, 41 audience, The Last Jedi, 41 audience, right? They cannot be... Every, you know, stupid, toxic male ever voting it down. Okay. Rise of Skywalker. 51% critical score. 86% audience score. And there's not as many reviews because people didn't go watch it. And because at that point, pretty much everybody hated Star Wars and didn't want to watch it. Because what you gained with The Last Jedi with this critics, you lost with The Rise of Skywalker. And you already lost your audience with The Last Jedi from before that. 51%. Because, and if you look, they all were mad. They were all so fucking salty over the fact they walked back the stuff from The Last Jedi. So are we shocked that The Last Jedi, which only had 485 reviews, got 91% and so did The so did the Acolyte? Is, is anybody surprised by this? I don't have time right now, but I bet you money the same people that, the other same people who love this also love The Last Jedi. I will bet you money on it. I don't have time to look, but I'll bet you. So, you know, shocker there. Big surprise. So what are they talking about here? Um, 
This is far from the first time a Star Wars property was review bombed for existing, The Last Jedi, because they were angry about Luke Skywalker doing the most Luke Skywalker-ass thing. No! Oh, because he was being dramatic. L Rachel, sit and spin. Rachel, get a life. Seriously. You're, they're mad about Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker tossing a lightsaber over his shoulder and acting like he did that movie was not how Luke Skywalker acted at all. I know. I watched all the movies. I read the books. I was actually a fan, I don't know, before it was trendy to be one, Rachel. But do go on, you'll probably tell me how I don't know anything about Star Wars either, even though I had like a, a huge collection of stars, sold stuff in college, put myself through school. Had, they named a character after me because I wrote fan letters to the authors and read all the damn books. But yes, please tell me how I'm not a fan. Um, because if you tell them that, they scream and cry like little babies. Unlike Rachel here, who has to write a whole article about it acting like a baby because she doesn't get her own way. Unlike Rachel here, who has to have a little meltdown hissy fit at people who don't agree with her about Doctor Who. Unlike Rachel here, who had to have a meltdown article about how men can't tell her about the, about Captain Marvel. Keep your hot takes to yourself. You know, so Rachel, you know, only she can scream, scream and cry like a little baby. It's only, it's only okay when she does it, guys. None of you are allowed to. But I've got tits, so I'm allowed to tell her to fuck off. They choose to throw tantrums or review bomb things they don't like. Hey, guess what, dumbass? I didn't review bomb it. I haven't said anything on the reviews. There's a lot of people who, don't, who do, aren't even watching it. There's a lot of people who aren't even review bombing it, don't give a crap about Rotten Tomatoes. But you know what? They aren't watching the show. And what I'm hearing about it is not good. But yes, yes, it's all these, these toxic men, because that's your stupid ass go to. Shocker. Simply bigots. Oh, here we go. So, okay, so we got toxic men. Now we're bigots because it's not straight white male. Again, a lot of people's big complaint about um, The Force Awakens and The Rise of Skywalker and The Last Jedi was that they wasted Finn. Black guy. But you know. Yeah. And, and then with the, with the Marvel, with the Captain Marvel, they were mad because they wanted Monica Rambeau. But yeah. It's all because they're just bigots, right? Because Rachel has no other argument if she isn't just calling people names because there isn't an argument. She's just trying to get attention, as always. Shocker. Shocker. Um, this is how you can tell the difference between big, okay, between good faith criticism and review bombing if the word woke is mentioned in the review. Actually, it's funny. A lot of the reviews don't have the word woke in them. So let's look at the reviews. Uh, let's look at some of these comments. Uh, let's see how many of them have woke in it. Not Star Wars, not so wrong, no, no woke. Awful writing, nonsensical fight scenes. Try to shift your fan base, no woke. No entertainment, no woke. Uh, 20 minutes hogwash, doesn't say woke. Terrible writing, very cringe acting, high expectations for the show from all the advertising, but only two episodes, I don't think I'll finish it. Um, attack me, Jedi, with all your strength, almost maybe turn the shop. Doesn't say woke. Despite the terrible initial premise from the statements of the director and cast, the show appears to be flat. Seems only pride. The only pride it wants to show is inclusive cast and the message. Okay, so they said the message, but they didn't say the word woke. Horrible writing is not Star Wars. I guess all these are legit, guys. They're all legit because the truth is it doesn't have the word woke. Absolute garbage. Disney has truly sunk to a new low. Was so excited for more Star Wars, but then I seen this. Bad acting apart from Carrie Ann Moss and the dude from Squid Game. Uh, and feels forced. Costumes and set looks cheap at the same time. If the plan was to end any hype with the Star Wars brand, they're succeeding. Um, don't see the word woke. This is a fail on every level. No, no word woke. Here, we'll just go, we'll just go here. Control F. Uh, woke. Oh my God, there's not a single woke in any of this. Hot damn, these are all legitimate criticisms according to Rachel's criteria. Okay. Um, so far, the big critiques of the accolade have been the presence of women, the presence of people of color, and fire in space. It has nothing to do with women or people of color. The fire in space thing was pretty stupid. I'm sorry. But yeah, these trolls aren't racist, misogynistic, and racing for Okay. But they're not. They're just saying it's a shitty show. And I'm sorry. It's an agenda show. That's what this is. They deliberately went out of their way to make it this way. What did you think was going to happen? And it, 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 you can get away with it if it's really, really good, but it's not even that. Don't you have anything better to do? No, I don't. I love roasting your ass and making money off it, Rachel. Don't you have anything better to do? Don't you have anything better to do, Rachel? No, because you're too busy trying to get people to read your articles because you're not getting enough views on your damn site. Hopefully it shuts down soon. Personally, I think that if you actually hate this series, you wouldn't take the time to review bomb it. You would move on with your day and focus on things you do enjoy. 
But you're not allowed to do that either because if you didn't like the show, you're, you know, you're not allowed to say that. You're not allowed to have any opinion other than the one that Rachel thinks you should have. Instead, these fans actually like it, but like it, but their entire brand is connected with being ang- an angry neck beard. Who, I don't have a beard, um, Rachel, sorry. Who hates anything that progresses Star Wars. No, 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 no. See, you can progress Star Wars with good stories. They hate anything that sucks. And this is this is going to not go the way you think it is, especially if it's true what happens later on in the, in the later episodes. It's not going to go the way that you think because the normies, the normal fans who don't even pay attention to Rotten Tomatoes, who aren't even listening to this video, who don't who definitely don't read the Mary Sue. Most people are like, what the hell is a Mary Sue? What the hell is that? They don't even know what your site is. And no one really goes to it. So most normies aren't giving a shit or they're watching it and they're tuning out because it's boring. And they don't even care. They're not even putting it on Rotten Tomatoes because they don't care. But a lot of people review, you know, review boosting it as well. But again, it's just a neck beards. It's just a neck beards. Whatever. The Yord Horde knows the accolade rules. And if you're still this mad that people who are not white men exist in Star Wars, can we just, can you have an argument, Rachel, without blaming it on white men all the time? Why are you such a racist misandrist? Why do you hate white men so much? Why are you such a bigot? I just simply think you need to go and get a life or something. You bore me. So do you, Rachel. Rachel, you try to own people all the time and you get your ass kicked. It's actually downright hilarious. But you bore me. But you had to write a whole article about it to tell people they bore you. Because the ads aren't good. Viewership's down. Google's throttling views. And no one's going to read your story. And if you go to try to start shit on Twitter, you get ratioed. So have fun. Because, you know, you're boring. Anyway, and predictable. Please like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.